Our next speaker, we have Mr. Mark Hornbeek, CEO and Principal Consultant, Engineering DevOps Consulting. Mark Hornbeek, aka DevOps, the gray ESQ, is CEO and Principal Consultant at Engineering DevOps Consulting and author of the book, Engineering DevOps. Mark is a specialist expert at applying a deep knowledge of engineering practices of continuous testing, test automation, and continuous quality assurance methodologies to DevOps transformations. Mark is an IEEE outstanding engineer and 44 year senior member of IEEE. He is a DevOps leadership advisor and mentor. He is an author of Continuous Delivery Architect CDA and DevOps Test Engineering DTE certification courses that are offered by the DevOpsInstitute.com. He is a blogger on DevOps.com and also a freelance writer of DevOps content, including webinars and white papers. His topic for today is continuous security is needed. DevSecOps is not enough. Hey everybody, it's Mark Hornbeek. I'm uh, gonna talk to you today about continuous security and why I think something called continuous security is actually needed even more than DevSecOps to secure software these days. Um, as I say, it's Mark Hornbeek. I am uh, CEO and consultant for a little boutique consulting firm called Engineering DevOps Consulting. I'm also the author of Engineering DevOps. I'm an ambassador and an author for the DevOps Institute. Um, and I do a lot of consulting, as I just said. The book's on the right there, Engineering DevOps. You can uh, log on to my website, engineeringdevops.com, and see lots of tools and other things associated with DevOps. Okay, let's get started. So continuous security as a concept is actually described in my book. You know, everybody talks about integrating security with DevOps, but really, you know, DevOps, even though it has ops in the name, is really big D and little O. It mostly informs about how to deliver software to production. It doesn't say a whole lot about what happens after you deliver to production. So Sec DevOps and DevSecOps and the different genres of integrating security with DevOps really has a lot to do with what you need to do to deploy securely to production, but it doesn't really inform all that much about what happens after production deployment. Uh, meanwhile, SRE is kind of the modern, you know, answer to complement DevOps transformation. So SRE is more about securing production. And I think, you know, from my own point of view, I think, the, the, you know, it's a good marriage to look at, you know, from the point of view of attackers, they don't think about it this way. They think about attacking the entire enterprise. Uh, from a security point of view, you really want to combine the practices of, you know, security with DevOps and SRE. Uh, meanwhile, there's also a debate about, you know, just the terminology Sec DevOps versus DevSecOps. I've thought for some time that it was just a, you know, a rose by any other name, but in reality, I'm beginning to realize that no, it's a little more important than that. Really, the Sec DevOps concept is to put security first and have security first mindset permeate throughout the entire value stream from goal setting, development, delivery, as well as production. So this is why, you know, the idea of continuous security is all encompassing. And this is why, I, you know, my thesis in this talk is that you really need continuous security, uh, not just DevSecOps or SecDevOps or SRE. You need a combined framework. You know, there are reasons for this. Um, this cute little diagram on the right. I think it depicts the reality of today's situation. Everybody that's developing software and delivering software and enterprises are you know, being chased by a lot of clever, you know, malicious actors, and you're trying to, you know, keep ahead of it. And that's why DevOps is important because it allows you to, you know, move quickly with your software changes and hopefully keep, you know, at least one step ahead. Hopefully, it's more than one step ahead of the bad actors uh, in terms of making sure that your software deployments are secure and that your environments are secure. But definitely it is a race to defend against those attackers. And in fact, it's accelerating. Uh, it, there's a lot of reasons for that acceleration. The attack surfaces themselves on the products and services that are being deployed are increasing because of the complexities. As you see, applications becoming more distributed applications, 
being deployed over distributed infrastructures with distributed pipelines and uh, a complex array of supply chains ever increasing. You know, there's just a lot more ways that attackers can, you know, get in. There are more places and attack surfaces. And meanwhile, the, you know, the attackers are getting smarter over time. There are more of them. There are, you know, attackers gaining experience, maturing, collaborating with each other. And there's plenty of success stories from an attacker's point of view out there that are rather scary. This is just a you know, set of them that are recent, but, you know, compared to a functional or performance failure, if you think about it as a blast zone, security failures typically uh, impact an entire enterprise. And therefore, you know, there's an argument that you should pay a lot of attention to security, maybe even more so in some ways, but certainly should be giving high priority to security aspects of your DevOps and your SRE because the potential risk is is very high. Uh, and there's plenty of evidence of that. If you look back at the solar winds attack in 2020, the attack on the supply chains through the solar winds tool, Microsoft Exchange, you know, only a month later, Acer had a big ransomware attack in March, you know, April, the, the Pulse Secure in May, you had the you know U.S. Uh, gas pipeline shut down by, by ransomware attacks, and most recently, Kaisa's attack, attack uh, affecting many people. These have major impacts. So, therefore, the argument here is that yeah, you need to really think about security. It can't be just an afterthought, and it needs to be built into the you know the DevOps as well as the production environments, so, and you need to think of it as continuous security. Okay, um, you know, security is kind of a latecomer to DevOps as well as SRE. If you look at the history of DevOps, you know, in 2009, the movement started, there were few, if any, concepts included in those original discussions. One of the early books, Continuous Delivery by Jess Humble, does mention security, but it's not you know, any major theme in the book. The Phoenix Project really has no mention of security. The DevOps Handbook has a little part in one chapter. Site Reliability Engineering book in 2016 has very few mentions of security. Uh, DevOps adoption handbooks and paragraphs. Really, it wasn't until about 2019 that security started to become a bigger topic combined with DevOps and SRE. The RSA conference, um, my own book came out at that time. It had a full chapter on continuous security and DevSecOps practices. Uh, the same year, the DevOps, uh, the Department of Defense released their enterprise Sec DevSecOps reference design document. More recently, last year, the Department of Homeland Security in introduced the SEC DevOps guidebook emphasizing the priority of security over other things. And that's still a work in progress, but it's been published that that's their intention to produce that. And just this year in the last month or so, you know, the Biden administration announced an executive order and NIST has responded with uh, security guidelines to support, you know, the importance of software security. So, you know, if you look at the overall trends, definitely security, you know, is, is deemed to be really important, but in terms of being combined with DevOps and that, it's kind of a latecomer. And uh, it's it's a latecomer that is gaining a lot of ground quickly and becoming very important. I see this also in my own consulting work. A lot of my clients are big enterprises in that. Uh, they start with DevOps without a whole lot of consideration to security, and then they add it on later. But uh, more recent engagements, they're talking about it earlier in the engagements. So the point is what needs to be secured? A lot of things, right? If you think about a whole value stream, not just the CI, CD pipeline, but the value stream, everything from planning, you know, through design, integration, pre-production, and then finally production. You know, there are really three dimensions that need to be secured. The applications themselves, the infrastructure upon which they're being deployed, and the pipelines. Plenty of things that need to be you know, built into these value streams to support security all the way from budgeting through to, you know, operation activities for defensive security tactics pretty much a lot of the same things but you know the the emphasis in applications is more about the application architecture the components of those things how you get them you know whether they're white sourced or outsourced or you know open source or wherever they're sourced from or you can design themselves as well as the features infrastructure it's more about your deployment environment and the automation of that and pipelines is more about tools and tool chains and the automation of those things. All of that needs to be secured. So you really do need to think about it as a continuous security concept. I think useful to think about different mindsets. You know, security has to start from the design point of view. But if you think about the frame, the most popular framework that designers follow for implementing code, the agile framework is really about creating a product or service that customers want. 
and security is a bit of a latecomer into those concepts. QA is a broader mindset where you're trying to verify a product or service to make sure it works the way customers expect it to when it's released for all production configurations available at the time of the release. So it's more than just making sure it's what customers want, but has a longer term view. This is handled largely by the DevOps and continuous testing frameworks. Uh, ops is yet another broader concept where you're trying to ensure a product or service continues to work the way customers expect for all possible production configurations that will exist for the life of the product or service. So again, this is even broader and this is where SRE and, and you know production, modern production practices uh, start to be important. Now you think about security as a mindset, it's even broader, right? You have to defend valuables, whatever they are, for the organizations that, you know, the organizations that create a product or service or the organizations that use a product or service against all unintended and malicious actions by people and organizations, both inside and outside of the organization for all production and non-production configurations for as long as there's something of value to protect, which could be beyond the life of a product, for example. So there isn't really one framework that deals with all of this. You know, sec DevOps, Dev, Dev SecOps really are targeted at pre-production. You know, this is why I say continuous security is important. That covers the you know the the complete span of all the security things. So what are some of the Dev SecOps practices? This is certainly a gross summary, but in general, you know, it's integrating security practices within the DevOps process, creating culture, and you know. In, together with security as code mindset to build in security into the software from the get-go and uh, all through its deployments. Engineering secure, engineer security, you know, controls into the design and deployment processes. Removing security as a bottleneck with continuous delivery pipelines. So that's key. I mean, the whole point of uh, most pipelines is to accelerate innovation and features, but you don't want it to be slowed down by security. So we really have to put really apply, you know, DevOps best practices to make sure that doesn't happen. On the other hand, there's a balance to strike between, you know, what's a good enough security versus fast enough innovation. You want to bridge the gaps between security practices while ensuring fast, safe deliverables. In other words, replacing siloed team practices with increased communication, shared responsibilities of tasks during all the phases. So fundamentally, it's a very, you know, all-encompassing, you know, continuous cycle of security throughout all the phases of, of DevOps. Sec DevOps, on the other hand, is pretty much encompasses everything that I just said about Dev SecOps. But the key difference, I guess, is you know emphasize. You could think about you know Mark Twain's little statement here: to change your life, you need to change your priorities. So I see so you know all of these increasing attacks that are happening. Clearly, something different has to happen. And you know this quote by Mark Twain, I think Mark Twain is appropriate. You need to give at priority. You can't be just one of the items on the list. Security isn't optional, according to this uh, you know, article by White Source that talks about whether DevSecOps or SecDevOps is just a rose by another name. And of course, the conclusion is no, it isn't. I mean, there is a, you know, a material difference. And the material difference is really that all team members share equally for respons- you know, equal responsibility for security. Security policies are designed in from the start. You don't wait to phase three of your transformation to think about security. You start building and designing them from the beginning. And at every point, you know, in the software development lifecycle, you give security considerations very high weight. Uh, for example, the gates, transition stages, and decision points. Um, you know, the security issues are elevated to a you know, very high priority. That's what uh, makes it materially different. Uh, from an SRE point of view, I mean, once things are in production, there's a lot of things that need to be done. Some of these things are, you know, well established as part of SRE practices. At least some of the practices for chaos engineering are strongly associated with SRE. But security chaos engineering is somewhat of a new discipline that SRE is now adopting. Purple teams, which is going beyond just, you know, integrating red teams and blue teams together in a, you know, a more automated fashion so that they can work closer together. So the attackers, you know, not the uh, simulated attacks with the developers with SRE participation, a zero trust network. So this is um, making sure that you know, from an architecture point of view and a network you know, protection point of view, all of the, uh, anything that's externally visible, uh, you assume, you know, you can't trust and you have to verify. And that should be part of the SRE practice as well. So these are, you know, post-deployment concerns, especially. 
to inform about how to improve security. Uh, this is my big picture blueprint. It's actually in the book. Uh, I think this is a slight update from what's in the book, but the general idea is to really secure properly, and not everybody can do this at the beginning of a transformation, but if you think about the big picture of security and all the things that you know, in this DevOps blueprint that need to be taken care of. It's not only securing CI, CD pipelines, but the whole value stream, and there's multiple of them in typical enterprises, the release processes and the value stream management and all the infrastructure on, on which they run. You need to secure, you know, everything from planning, design, code and task, commit, merge, build test, artifacts, application, uh, yeah, sorry, acceptance testing, release approvals, deployment to production processes, operations in production, post-production testing, and post-production operations, the infrastructure upon which everything runs. You know, there's a lot to secure basically. And every one of them has some tools associated with them and processes and practices that can be automated. So it's not a small undertaking for sure, but if you're really serious about continuous security, then you want to consider you know, everything on this blueprint to you know, make sure you got things covered. Of course, you know priorities are the key. You can't do everything for every application, so you're going to really have to decide, you know, together with the security team, what's the highest priority at any point in time. I ha personally believe value stream management has uh, got a big role to play with security. It's not been talked about a whole lot, but value stream management being the capability to manage everything from planning through to operations potentially rather than just the CI, CD pipeline tools, so security governance automation, having security dashboards, analytics, you know, entry exit policies for each stage in the value streams, code, pipelines, and it can also help you, you know, orchestrate and make visible the activities of the people, leadership, culture, skills, processes, policies as code, and all the different technologies associated with security. On the people side, you know, it's a team, you know, there's definitely the ac bad actors are now collaborating and working as teams, and there's a lot of them out there. So to complement that, you really need to operate as a team internally. If you think about, you know, the emphasis of different types of people in the value streams, leaders tend to be mostly participating in planning and production and deployment. Now, security needs to be there all along and collaborating with all the other players and developers, QA, infrastructure folks, security themselves, as well as product, you know, program management, project management. So there's a lot of people interactions, sharing of knowledge and information needed. Uh, processes, there are many, you know, if you think about the total set of things. I'm not going to go through all of these, but start with planning, you know, through in my consulting practice, I do gap assessments to help people understand what's their current security posture relative to what could be important for them. Value stream mapping your security processes, looking at security requirements, user stories, and then through design, uh, automating threat modeling, looking at different security frameworks. And I'm not going to go through this whole list, but as you can see, you know, there's a lot to, you know, think about when you're thinking about continuous security processes that complement the continuous security, you know, blueprint that I presented a few charts ago. Similarly, the technologies to complement that. So once you understand your processes, then you need to choose which tools you're going to use to implement those and then go ahead and implement them. And there are different tools again for every you know, stage in the pipeline. Some of these tools you know, are applicable across the board. You wanna choose, and nobody has an infinite amount of money to spend on tools, you know, but make sure you choose the right tools that are gonna address the highest priorities for your particular application security issues. Ultimately, you wanna have a strong roadmap. Uh, this would be a summary example of such a roadmap. It certainly isn't the detailed version, but it gives you an idea. You know, don't start by forgetting about security and adding on later. Start by understanding your business security goals through assessments, value stream mapping, setting priorities, culture and training about security, and thinking about what metrics you're going to use to monitor what's happening. Then implement the front end of the value stream continuous integration stage, integrating security controls as much as possible from the get-go. Finally, adding it into you know the, the back end, the continuous delivery side with security SLOs being a key focal point there. And ultimately you're trying to get into a cycle of continuous improvement where you're doing more advanced security things in order to get finer levels of security controls, doing some of the more advanced things like security chaos engineering, purple team, zero trust architectures and so on. How do you get there? You know, nobody gets there in one jump. It does take time. It's a constant ongoing battle between closing the gap between whatever the problem space is and the solution space, the problem space being the threats, the vulnerabilities and risk as far as security is concerned against your systems, subsystems and features, 
and the solution space are the people, process, and technologies associated with your applications, infrastructure, and pipelines. That all comes together in a planning process in which you know security, dev, QA, and ops should participate to decide what is the backlog, the themes, the epics, and stories that then agile and DevOps process can take over and implement. And you have an ongoing cycle of things where you're constantly looking at security as a high priority if you're following the security first mindset in continuous security. Okay, that's basically my talk. I'm sure that you might have some questions. You're welcome to you know, chat or send me an email at mhornbeek at engineeringdevops.com. If you are interested in you know, security assessments or any instructor services related to security or DevOps or continuous testing or SRE, I'm open to that. So thank you very much. I hope that you enjoyed my talk and, um, and hope you enjoy the rest of the DevOps India Summit. Thank you.